Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to blend multiple cross sections into one sweep using the sweep node and a bit of vex. So in the end, we'll have a bunch of dynamically created uh, ramps and then we can define the weight ourselves and just define how much weight we want where. Let's create a new scene and a geometry container with a random curve. I'll just take a line with 100 points along a length of three units and use the vector attribute noise vector node to add a bit of positions here, preferably without fractal, so we have an interesting curve. And use a sweep node with a rather high resolution curve, so 128 divisions would result in that kind of curve. Just play a bit with the element size and the amplitude, so once you find some kind of curve that is okay for just testing out our workflow, we'll start. The idea is to make the sweep do multiple sweeps, so we merge in a couple of more random shapes. I come up with another circle because uh, that way I know where it starts and ends and I don't have to manage the, um, the winding. Let's use uh, 16 divisions and create a number of copies. I'll do five and use an attribute wrangle where I define some random shapes. Let's use a float value s underscore zero. This variable will be just a random value for each curve and multiply the position vector by it. So we have a bunch of circles now and one of them is a bit small, so I would like to fit that random value between 0.5 and 1.0. Now for certain points, I want to scale them in as well. So if certain conditions are met, the point number, let's say modulo of the primitive number plus one, if this equals one, I want to do an additional scale. So let's just copy that float s underscore zero line, rename it, and multiply again by s underscore one, and maybe add another seat. So we come up with a number of uh, different shapes. So if you reduce the copy to three, then we have a circle and we have a sun and we have some kind of star depending on the number of divisions. Let's bring this to the merge. It should be the second input of the merge node. And now inside the sweep node, you see them all combined. We have that outer surface. We want to keep that. And in the end, we want to blend into all the other cross-section surfaces. To get a bit more detail, I want to resample my shapes using subdivided curves. Um, they should still be recognizable and then I think we're ready to now enable the UVs so that way every surface has a parameterization and we can basically sample from a position of the outer surface to the other sweep surfaces. And in order to keep track, we also enable the cross-section numbers that they should show up in the geometry spreadsheet as cross-num. I promote the cross-number from points to primitives for later use. But first of all, I split off 
the first cross-section surface by setting the group type of the split node to add cross num equal equal zero. The second output of the split node now has all the other cross-section surfaces. Let's combine the first and the second output using an attribute wrangle. And first of all, I would like to have the number of cross sections. So I create a channel integer called sections. And I also provide my UV coordinates So the vertex function uh, brings the UVs for each point. And now I would like to have those curve ramps for each cross section of the second input. We can get that and even get that dynamically by using the edit parameter interface and choose a folder, which we change to multi-parm block. Let's call it sections and name it accordingly in the label and now we want a float ramp which we are going to call weight. Let's label it weight and add a number sign so we know which curve number we're talking about. Keep in mind that the first instance is a one which makes sense because we are going to start with the cross number one. Cross number zero is our outside circle and we want to refer to the others. So in a first loop, we are going to just collect the weights. So for each integer i, zero, I smaller the number of cross sections, we will uh, read in those ramps. And if you like, you can also look at the website. I provide some code here, which is essentially uh, adding all the weights from each ramp at a certain UV uh, position along the curve, along this direction. And it's appending this to an array called weights and we are getting the sum in the end. So let's put up the array weights. The brackets indicate it's an array. And inside the loop we want to sample the weight from a channel ramp called weight plus the number, so integer to string I and the location is UV1, which is the second UV component. So let's append this to the weights array. And after looping over all ramps, we want to get the sum of all weights. And there's a function to read in all weights inside that array called sum. The other loop is going to be an for each loop which iterates over all entries of that array. And we also want to keep track of the iteration. So we use integer k and use float w and the array was called weights. So now we can iterate over this and just like before, we are going to prepend a, in this case, a vector called pos, which is set to zero initially. And then we want to sample the positions from those other surfaces along the curve. So the way we do that is we use the UV sample function. And in order to specify which cross section surface we want to sample from, we're using ad hoc groups, um, 
based on the attribute cross num. So inside the loop, we first define a string called grp for group. And we are going to ask for a specific cross section number. which is k plus 1, because we don't want to start off uh, with our first cross-section, but the ones with those spe special shapes. So the same is true for the weights. The weights don't start at 0, but at 1, so we need to add 1 to i as well. Let's sample the position k. So uv sample is the function that can read the position from the other input. We just should define the group, tell it to use its uvs, and we are going to feed in our uvs, the ones we defined up here. Next, we are going to multiply in the weight. So let's multiply the weight on that particular index k and multi divided by the sum of all weights so that way it's normalized then we can just add it to the position vector and this should be identical to the code you can find on the website in the end we need to output that new position and this is where we can check our results or, or do the debugging so mm, it's it's quite easy to do something wrong here in my case i haven't uh, set up any ramps so once you click on the plus sign you now get a way to um, blend them so you see i blend from one shape to another but of course it would be nice to do that automatically so um, at the moment, I know it's three copies, but maybe I have a different setup, so I wouldn't want to define this by hand. I would rather use a function, which is n unique values, so I can ask how many unique values we have inside the class primitive by the name attribute. Uh, in our case, the attribute is named cross num. So let's refer to the second input. Tell them that d underscore primitive is the class we want to look into. And in there, we want to have the number of individual cross numbers. With Alt E, you can open up and see the code again. So this would return how many unique cross-section numbers we have in the primitive class in the second input. And it correctly found one, two, three ramps, and now you can come up with all sorts of shapes. Hill or switch that, and then you can define where certain shapes should show up. They can come up multiple times, and you can shuffle them around the way you like. Just make sure you provide more than zero. If, if everything is zero in one place, it will have a hard time knowing what you want. All right, thank you for watching.